the X-Men are all different. Different from average humans, and because they're that different, the general public hates them, hounds them, harasses them, fears them. And again, when I used to do a lot of college lectures, well, you said so something when you said John Brown, like you know, that deep. We feel that the anti bigotry message of the X Men is a very strong one. I've been seeing a lot of videos about the man from Africa who the government was trying to kill, but they couldn't really kill him. You know, they did all kind of bad stuff to him. I just want to let y'all know he was a Bantu man, he was an Israelite by blood, a saint, real saint. His name was Simeon Toko. They cut his heart out and everything. You see that? And they told him. They told he told them when his heart was out that uh there's many more like him that's gonna come in the in the, in the future. And they ain't gonna be able to stop what's gonna happen. shows on this and the brothers uh clip they give copyright strikes but uh i don't think they take it down but it may be muted in certain countries so people from around the world they won't be able to see it so to speak but um overall you know this is through edification because we believe we're coming into these times uh people are starting to turn up in the spirit so it's only righteous that the most high will balance the aspect and level us up on the right hand side because the interview when the video first started was by a guy named Stan Lee, which was the creative X-Men in several of the Marvel, Marvel comics. I believe he created Spider-Man, too, if I'm not mistaken. But um, basically, the X-Men represents the Israelites, okay, because we were misunderstood, we were harassed, we were ridiculed, okay, and ultimately they was afraid of us because they knew that this, this God-like power resonated within our DNA, okay? They knew more than what we knew about ourselves because Esau Edom has studied the physiology of the so-called black men, Hispanic and Native American men. Like um, it was told during the time of uh, the Native Americans, during the time of the, the uh, uh, before the Civil well, not the Civil War, but before um, the conquest of, of, of Hispaniola and, and Columbus and the Spanish Inquisition around those times, it was stated that when Gad uh, uh, was able to run a couple of hundred miles in a full sprint without getting tired, and this was just men that was and, and flesh, man, okay, because their diets was intact, it wasn't GMOs, they had the natural herbs of the land, okay, they lived off the land, they had proper diets, there was no illnesses, there was no colds, no flus, no C19s, no uh, juice, jabs, whatever you want to call it, but they were natural, and on top of that, they were the people of the Most High, and Esau studied that the power was in the beards of these men, okay, because when he recruited them to fight for the particular cavalries and the different uh, armies, Basically, what happened was he did an experiment 
to see why was these Native American men thriving in battle so much. Okay, because um, the guerrilla warfare, those are tactics of Native American Indians, Gadites and Reubenites. But basically what they did was they tested it. They did an experiment and they found out when they shaved the men's beards, they found out that, hey, that's when they start getting decimated in battle. You see what I'm saying? So the power lies within the Israelite men. Okay, I mean, the beard is a badge of honor. That's a manly trait and a, and a manly a badge of honor. But overall, you know, we've been a Hebrew Israelites that 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 has a strong vibration and Esau knows that. That's why he makes movies about us. That's why he makes movies like Avengers, uh, X-Men, okay, Spider-Man, Superman. Because all of it is gearing around us because the scriptures tell you that uh, the house of David or the Israelite man is basically like God, man. Okay, and we have to believe that because we, we like I did in transit earlier, we are sheep in the midst of wolves. Okay, and even when you talk to these people, they have a demonic vibration on it. Okay, and we have to tone ourselves down to a sort of sort because honestly speaking, we can't correlate or we cannot, we can't have, how can I say, we can't relate to the people, so to speak. I mean, certain things, you know, but overall, when you talk to people, it's real awkward. You know what I'm saying? Like um, the two uh, demons, these women that got me working with today, we kind of just hashed out what was happening between attention. But it was still an awkward conversation because of my mindset. It's like, y'all, a bunch of fucking women. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to say any or acknowledge you in any way or form. Especially, you ain't my woman, so I can really care less about you. You know, but overall, it just, it's, a, it's a weird dynamic between us and them. And this is why that power is going to separate the sheep or the boys from the men. Because when we get our power, we're going to really be able to express who we truly are and how we really feel. Okay, me personally... I have a, uh, uh, how can I say it? I, I have a, I would say I have an issue with expressing myself a particular way. Okay, if I feel some type of way about you, it'll show. Or sometimes I just hide my emotions completely and you will never know. But overall, if I have something against you, you will kind of know. You know, you'll kind of know because I'm a little standoffish. But these people, they, they make you standoffish towards them. You know, right? And that's not saying that if I'm standoffish with brothers and stuff like that. I have some against them, no, because it's just part of, you know, Jake's personality. We got different, you know, different times, different days. The spirit operates how it's going to operate. But overall, these people in the world, hell no, man. I have no remorse for these people. Okay? So, um, anyway, I'm going to get a, I'm going to finish the video and I'm going to get a couple of precepts because the scripture here is Psalms 82 and 6. Um, it says the sons of God, X-Men, the elect, will be activated with supernatural God-like power. And you got to believe that, man. Okay? Because when we get that power... The people that looked down on us, the people that thought we was fickle or feeble, that thought that we wasn't about it, all right? The people that thought that, you know, we had something to prove to them, they're going to find out, like, oh, shit, these are actually the servants of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. And they're going to be ashamed that they've came against us, man, you know? So it says, Psalms 82 and 6, it says, I have said, you're gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High, okay? And this is talking about the Hebrew Israelite, okay? The Hebrew, the black, Hispanic, and Native American men. On this side that's going to get that power first Because in the kingdom all of us are going to have spiritual power Even our kids Even the women are going to have spiritual power to a degree Okay because Hey it says the house of Israel should be like God Okay so hey from the greatest to the least of us We're going to have power Okay but the elect we're going to be on a whole different level Towards where we are the number Than the rest of the nation of Israel But nonetheless The typical Israelite man Is going to be born with spiritual power man Okay, and the scriptures goes into it. Now also many nations are gathered against thee that say, Let her be defiled, and let our eye look upon Zion. But they know not the faults of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel. Or he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. Arise and flesh, O daughter of Zion. I will make thine horn iron. You see, he's moving faster than the speed of light. He's able to sift in and out of the elements, man. He's able to use the elements to 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 the the bend the, the, the shape around his environment, man. You know what I'm saying? And these precepts that's being posted on the screen solidifies what you've seen happening in the video. Now, of course, you know, this is all a figment of imagination because the powers, when we get it, is going to be all in the mind, man. And we're going to be able to manipulate it and bend it to how we so pleases. Because whatever the mind can think, you can do. Okay. Now, the illustrations that brothers are posting, 
Okay, this is just through the spirit. This is what we feel may happen. But overall, the Lord can have it totally different. But it's going to be on a higher level than what we can even fathom. You know what I'm saying? But brothers are doing this because this is just through the spirit. It's through our imagination. And this is the level we can only come up on in this third dimensional plane. Okay, but when we actually get that power from the fourth dimension, bro, it's going to be beyond what an X-Man or what Superman can do. You know, and you question and say, well, how? You know, certain brothers may have nervous energy. Some brothers may suffer from anxiety. Certain brothers may suffer from anger. Some brothers may so suffer from uh, being too outspoken, whatever it may be. But, you know, uh, the Lord is going to put all that into perspective and he's going to balance everything out. So those particular illnesses that you suffer because anxiety is a mental illness, man. OK, that's due to your environment. But the Lord is going to do away with all that because didn't the scripture say that the Lord shall rise with healing in his wings? So ain't no wicked Jake or no Edomite going to make you timid or make you afraid or make you kind of choke up, you know, or make you take the low. You just going to decimate his ass when he <laughs> he steps out of line, man. And the same thing with these women. You women are going to get a taste of the spiritual power of the men of the Lord, too. And a lot of you are going to be judged by this power, man. OK, but a lot of you are going to try to flock to us when you're seeing us doing things like this, because now you're going to want the protection. But honestly, saying it's going to be too late for a lot of you. But then some of you, you know, you'll come back around, you'll get it back in your right mind and you'll fall back in line with what you were supposed to do. And then it'll be all good. But for the majority of you, you ain't going to make it up out of here, man. And I will make thy hoofs brass. And thou shalt beat in pieces many people. And I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord. And their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. Hearing that name, it gets you amped, man. Okay, because it's power within the name of the Lord, man. All right. So anyway, this is the book of Isaiah 50. Matter of fact, let's go to this one. Uh, this is the book of Zechariah 12, and I'm gonna start at verses uh. Yep, let's go to uh Zechariah 12, and I'm gonna start at verses uh five. It says, "And the governors of Judah to say in their heart." The inhabitants of Jerusalem should be my strength, and Yahweh of hosts their power. And in that day would I make the governors of Judah like an hearth a fire among the wood. And what happens when fire devours wood? It devours it, it burns it down, it completely eviscerates it. It says, and like a torch of fire in a sheaf. A sheaf is kind of like what you put a, 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 I believe like a sheath. It's like what you put your sword in, if I'm not mistaken. But it says, and they should devour all the people round about, and on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Because, hey, we're going to put those heathens to flight. Those that took our land, that abrooted us, that put us in slavery. You governors of you other nations, hey, we coming for your head, man. Okay? And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad is going to give us the power to execute judgment on you heathens, man. Okay? And we're going to need it because we're going to have to take this world back over. And we're going to have to put it back in place. That's why, brothers, you got to have your mind circumventing around ruling, man. Around that you're, you're 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 better than this shit. You're better than what these people have to offer. Okay, we're better than that, man. And you have to believe that. Okay, don't let some conversation with a two-third Jake make you feel inferior, man, because they want to live off the rudiments of the world. No. Okay, but it says here, and the Lord shall also save the tents of Judah first. And this is why you had the Negro tribes wake up first. It says, in the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, do not magnify themselves against Judah, because we're gonna all be on one accord. Okay, we're all going to be magnified in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And there's not going to be any hatred or any envy among the tribes. Because we're going to come together as a collective. You see? And it says here, And in that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble, feeble goes into being timid or afraid or without power. It says, He that is feeble among them at that day should be as David. Okay? And the house of David should be as the Most High. And the angel of the Lord before them. So the house of David is going to be as God, man. Okay? So we're going to have that God-like power. We're going to have that Goku-like power, but on a far greater level. Okay, like we're going to have the power, just to say imaginary-wise, we're going to have the power to destroy worlds. Like what the Saiyans did when they went to conquer different galaxies. Hey, Vegeta was able to destroy a planet with a fucking energy blast, man. Okay, like when Goku was fighting Cell, and when he was in the air and he was going to throw that Kamehameha, Cell called his bluff and was like, Goku ain't going to do it because that type of power would destroy the entire planet earth he said he'd destroy the earth if he let it loose 
But what happened was Goku held on it and warped, then threw it at him. Okay. Same thing when Saiyan was getting, I mean, when Cell was getting ready to put the power into the Kamea, Goku said, Stop, you can't do it because you're going to destroy the entire earth. He said, It's too dangerous. You see? But that type of power is coming back to us, man. Okay. And it says here, and it should come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. So, hey, brothers, we ain't got a damn thing to worry about, man. All right. So this is the book of Isaiah 51, and I'm going to start at verses, uh, oops, lock it, Isaiah 50. Oh, shit, wrong priest, wrong scriptures. Jeremiah, uh, uh, I think it's 51 and 20. Yep, 51 and 20, it says, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. Okay, it says, For with thee I will break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. Who is thee? That's talking about the elect men. Okay? Then it says, and with thee, I will break in pieces and the horses and his rider, okay? Meaning that you, you military officials, okay? You niggas out there that's in these cars, that's stunning, all of this madness that you're into, okay? You firefighters, you, you, you army officials, we gon', we want to smoke with all you people, man, okay? Your robots, your androids, your super soldiers, we want all the smoke, man. Because, hey, Esau gonna send terminators at our homes, hey, the Lord gonna raise up a standard. You know, he ain't just gonna let us get beat up and drugged through the living room and thrown in back of a paddy wagon and stumped out and shot up, okay? With certain brothers will be martyrs, but even then that comes in the form of beheading, okay? And it says in his rider, and with thee I will break in pieces the chariot in his rider, and with thee I will also break in pieces man and woman, and with thee I will break in pieces old and young, and with thee I will break in pieces the young man and the maid, okay? The young man and the young woman, you, you, you strawberry thoughts out here. You're gonna get straight up decimated. You, I'm proud, I'm over a man type women Y'all gonna get decimated out here Okay, you young men, you young hood jakes Are uh, you snatching grabs, man You jakes that like to snatch iPhones and purses, man You gonna get dealt with too Okay, it says And I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock And with thee I will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen And with thee I will break in pieces rulers and captains, man Okay, captains and rulers So army officials, men on level, super soldiers and I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, says Yahweh Bashim and Shai, man. All right. So anyway, with that, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh Bashim and Shai, Bashim and Kakwadash. Um, I'd like to give double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone and blessings and salutations to the whole elect. New words in the gospel, bro, living the standard of Yahweh Bashim and Shai, wherever it may be. With that, Lord, so you would add a fight to the next lesson. Shalom. Bob, Bob.